alaikum. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. It's a pleasure to be here and speak to you, as always. I hope you are all safe and well, and your families as well are safe and well. Uh, today, I will take you through the journey of the intelligent network, the intelligent connectivity of Huawei, and we'll be taking that within the industry for and what's happening in the industry and the economy as well. So basically here where we started as Huawei 30 years back, we started in a small apartment in Shenzhen, very humble rented apartment, but over 30 years we managed to become the biggest ICT company on earth today. If we look at the revenue, the presence across the globe, the investment in R&D, uh, the references we have, we are definitely and by far in the ICT industry number one, and with the most comprehensive portfolio of solutions in the industry as well. Uh, so if you look here, we are serving 228 uh, 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 enterprises of the global 500. Actually, the number is 253 as per the report of today. Uh, and our position is the number 49th from the, uh, within the Fortune 500. And we are the third in the investment in R&D. And this one actually is very important. When we are talking about investment in R&D, we do invest every year around 15% of our revenue into the R&D. This is one of the highest globally, and this is among all industries. So if you are comparing to automotive or pharmaceutical or any other industry, we are ranked number three. And this is one of the pillars that makes Huawei Huawei today. If we look at the growth happened in the last 30 years, one of the key pillars is the investment in the R&D. That's how we came first with the 5G. That's how we came first with the full stack for all scenario AI. That's how we came with the intelligent connectivity that we are talking about today. The last but not least, when we talk at our presence here, so it's good to invest, it's good to have references, but you also need to know that we are delivering projects and have partnership in more than 700 cities globally, mainly talking about safe cities and smart cities, and that's across 170 countries from the 195 countries exist on Earth. Uh, in this slide, we are talking about the economy, and what I want to share with you is, a uh, report shows that the digital economy by 2025 will be $23 trillion. And the investment in the digital economy is focus area for every single country on Earth. Almost 165 countries have a national strategy for digitalization across. If we are talking about Vision 2030 in Saudi, talking about Dubai, us being here, Dubai have a plan to be the hub and the open lab for the, so number one worldwide, for all the intelligent applications for Industry 4 by 2023. So talking about a couple of years down the road, Dubai plans to be the hub and the open lab globally for all the industrial and different Industry 4 vertical applications, which we'll be talking about. So that's happening across the globe, and this is a very big opportunity for all of us to leverage on and to transform the way we do business and to transform the service we deliver to our citizens as well. Here I'm sharing with you some of the solutions. So it is good to talk about uh, Industry 4. Of course, as you know, Industry 1 happened with the steam engines coming and then a full industry was built around that from tractors and the agriculture industry and then the trains and so on. So it was one invention and an entire industry built around it. In Industry 2, it was the electricity and then the electric engine came and then a full manufacturing industry was built around it. Industry 3 is the internet where everything started to be in line. We don't need to go to the banks anymore. We don't need to go to the airlines to buy a ticket. We do everything, education, working online. Everything became online because of the internet, which is the Industry 3. In Industry 4, what created Industry 4 is the creation of 5G, AI, cloud, and big data. Around this technology, everything is evolving and is going to create abundance for our life. To give you some of the solutions, examples, so talking about the technology is good, talking about the economy is good, but what are the vertical solutions that we can see out of the industry for? Today, Huawei engaged is in more than 600 projects globally across the vertical industries. So we don't bring to you only the technology, but also we work with the ecosystem to build vertical solutions for the different industries. So for example, if you are talking about a, an airport, and I'm trying to get an industry which is very common to all of us, if we are talking about an airport, you're using the biometrics and the AI, your face becomes your, your passport. 
So the moment you step, this is called the one ID. The moment you step into the airport, then the system will re recognize your face and it will know that it's Ala Ishimi who has a flight to London Heathrow at 3.30 this afternoon using Emirates Airlines. And then the entire process will be seamless. No interaction with any human. You will just go and drop your luggage and the labeling will be there in an automated way because again, the system recognize you. You do the self check in, you do the self security check in until you get into the gate and the system is recognizing you. And across the process, you get a lot of intelligence as well. So you will get information uh, as a user of passenger experience, you will be getting information about the closest brands, shops, if you are interested in certain brands. Or if it's time for you to have lunch, it will show you what are the closest restaurants to you. Uh, if you go to the, the board to see when is your flight or which gate, or if the gate have changed, then the system will recognize you and it will tell you your flight to London Heathrow is at 3.30, you have 15 minutes to reach to the gate uh, and it is gate number X. So all this form information will be very much automated. That's from the, the operation, sorry, the, the passenger experience point of view and from the security point of view as well. Another aspect from the security is you will be able to see the entire airport in what's called the IOC, the Intelligence Operation Center. And this actually goes across. You can use the IOC for an MOI or an MOD or any entity for different industries. The concept of the architecture integrating all the data from the different departments together and creating one version of truth and being able to use the AI, machine learning, and deep learning to create intelligence and take decisions, concept is the same. So in there, you will be able to see the, all the airports. You will be able to do a location for the flights to the different gates, and so on and so forth. Of course, in addition to the passenger experience enhancement, that have saved billions of dollars for airports and saved on average 15 minutes for the time you spend in queuing inside the airports. So this is one case. The other case, if we're talking about banks, again, I'm trying to get one common experience for all of us. Talking about banks and talking about something like WeBank in, in China, actually this bank doesn't have any branch. You can do everything you want to do via your phone in a very fast and agile way. So actually, if you want to apply for a loan, a personal loan, you can get it in just a few minutes. So the system is connected to the center bank, to the crediting entity, to the loaning entity, different entities, and to the users. And the system will be able to check on your credibility and say, yes, we can give you a loan. This is the maximum loan you can give you. This is how much will be the installment and so on. If you look at the, the, the page of the bank on the, in your mobile, it is like the Facebook or any other social media application where the interaction is very easy. And it is integrated to third parties as well. So you can buy a car if you want. You will see what are all the offers on cars. And you can get a loan to buy a car. And then the bank will pay automatically to the uh, uh, Automotive, uh, automotive supplier and choose your car and buy it in a matter of minutes. Yeah? This is the future of banking. This is banking for. So these are just two examples, talking about digital oil field, digital pipeline, uh, talking about smart cities, talking about safe cities. There are a number of vertical solutions for each industry, which is going to transform the way we live, going to, transfer, to transform the way we do business. And Huawei is the leading player when it comes to these vertical solutions. Uh, coming to the second one, talking, okay, so it is very good that we talk about the industry and the economy and the different applications, but what are the challenges? When we are talking about the challenge or one of the challenges for building industry for, a key area is the connectivity. So when we say that today concurrent users online all the time is about 2.3 billion people. Yeah, this is huge. What kind of bandwidth do we need to have for these people? Some are watching videos, some are attending uh, calls, some are studying, some are working. What kind of bandwidth do we need to do for that? Talking about AR and VR, 337 million concurrent users connected as we talk, all the time concurrent. Talking about the future and smart education and smart, different smart applications and hospitality and so on, what this number will be? And how much bandwidth do we need? What kind of connectivity do we need to be able to deliver on these expectations? The second area is the cloud. So talking about cloud, and especially after the pandemic, things have changed. We are all working online. We are all work, working from home, students, uh, uh, workers, everyone who can do anything, telemedicine and so on. Everything is happening online. So at certain point, there was maybe a resistance. Do I move to the cloud or not? Today, 100% of the enterprises are the cloud. 
85% of the applications are on the cloud. So it, it became a reality that we cannot avoid, and I think this reality will increase also as we go. Faisal mentioned yesterday that it's 110%, not only 100% uh, now. The third point is about the intelligence. Uh, so talking about AI, not 7% of the companies will be using AI. That's good, and it is important, and it is coming into a first stage, if you want, or moving towards maturity. But the second very important point, and this is a paradigm shift that today we collect a lot of data. This is the reality, using the IoT, having sensors, cameras, computers, and so on. We collect a lot of data, and we send this data to the cloud. But the point is, do we really utilize this data? That's the question mark. With the AI being more matured, we'll be utilizing 86% of the data. So having 86 of the data utilized and having AI run, run on it using machine learning and self-learning and deep learning and so on, this will require a lot of computing power, will require special connectivity, and will require a lot of storage. So it is something we have to keep in mind. And the, then the question arises, what about the operations and maintenance of such data center and such network? The complexity definitely will increase. And this is one of the biggest challenges we see when we are talking about Industry 4. Now, I'm going to talk about the Canvas, and uh, our colleagues will be talking about it today as well. Why Canvas? Why did I choose Canvas out of all the solutions and areas we talked about? Because everything starts from the Canvas. If we're talking about telemedicine, if we're talking about the healthcare, a hospital is a Canvas. If we're talking about a smart education, a university is a Canvas. If we are talking about smart government, a government department is a Canvas. If we're talking about smart manufacturing, a factory is a Canvas. So everything starts from the canvas and when you look at the facts it is scary in a sense that everything happens in the canvas but when we see that 62 percent of the canvas infrastructure is not ready is not ready to accommodate for the AI and industry for requirements this is a very big challenge and I think this is the easiest step to start from and it is the most important at the same time Uh, here I'm going to talk about the AI fabric, and if you look at the left side and the right side, the left side I call it the Cloud One. So in Cloud One, we moved all the applications into the cloud. We started to get computing power and uh, uh, virtual machines and storage capacity and so on on the cloud. We moved 85% of the application to the cloud, so provisioning and so on. That's good and well. And we have very good data centers today across the globe that are delivering very well on this cloud services expectation. The point is moving to the cloud too. Cloud too is mainly about big data and about AI. So as I mentioned, we will be utilizing 85% of the data leveraging on the AI, machine learning, deep learning, and other AI applications to extract intelligence and send this intelligence back. So open this gate or close this gate, uh, catch this guy or allow this car to go or stop this car or whatever actions could be intelligent action the system is taking on your behalf or could be that you are sending to the one on charge to take certain actions. So this is the paradigm shift moving from the cloud one to cloud two. And in this case, the question comes that everything is becoming online and everything is becoming intelligent. What kind of connectivity do we need to have for our data center? Yeah, and Huawei will be able to provide a 400 gig connectivity using the AI fabric into the data center. And this is a key paradigm shift, and I invite you to see the demo outside. I think we'll be de doing demo on the stage as well today. So here, talking about the new vision of the industry and connecting everything. So when we are talking about the intelligent network and talking about intelligent connectivity, we are talking about connectivity that is hybrid in a sense that it could be 5G, it could be the fifth generation of the fixed network, it could be Wi-Fi 6, it could be fiber, it could be cover. This hybrid will help you manage your total cost of ownership. So you don't have to put the full-fledged highest technology for everything in the campus or the connectivity between data centers or so on. It depends on really what you need to get what is required for your applications. But definitely you need to have gigabit everywhere. You need to have the lowest latency, you need to have zero bucket loss, you need to have secured and reliable network to be able to deliver on the requirements of the new application and AI and industry for solution that we are talking about. And this is what you get from the intelligent connectivity and intelligent network of Huawei. 
Now we're talking about something very uh, important. This is the autonomous network. And talking about autonomous network, we actually took the name from the autonomous cars. So autonomous cars are driverless cars, cars that can go by itself without a driver. The same way we are looking to transform the network, a network that can manage itself, can predict if there will be any problem, and I will explain how, and fix and self-heal itself if any problem happens. And of course, talking about autonomous cars, we are talking still about level three and level two. We have been talking about it for the last two, three years, maybe five years, but we don't see any of them yet on the road because it takes stages and takes time to get to maturity. And the same applies when it comes to the autonomous network. The good thing is when we look at the journey, we have some important characteristics here on how do we do that. So first, this autonomous network will have the ability to do the intent part. So we have been also talking in the last two years ahead of everyone else about the, the A, uh, uh, intent driven network, the IDN, uh, a network that can uh, pre uh, predict any problem and uh, and know what are the intentions of the business people for the different applications and then translate that into commands for the network to, trans to execute on that. So you continue to have that, of course, in the autonomous network. In addition, you will start using the digital twin AI big data to do a simulation in a sense, okay, I want to deploy some new services or applications. So the network will take this intent, go and do in, in the digital twin a simulation for that and see if there will be any errors define these errors, fix these errors, before you go to the reality, to the physical part, and this is the digital twin, mixing the digital and uh, uh, physical, then it will go and fix the problem in the digital world before you go in the physical and the reality and deploy it. And a lot of other features you will be getting from the autonomous network, and this will be going to transform the way we manage our network and our data centers. So this is basically what I mentioned. So software-defined network is what everyone is talking about today, including uh, our competition, our customers, and ourselves. But where we are today, we have been talking about the IDN for the last two years, and now we are ahead and we are talking about autonomous network again, at least two, three years ahead of anyone in, in the market. And of course, iMaster is the first uh, uh, automatic and intelligent platform that's going to help us to move into the autonomous network. Uh, here, let me talk a little bit about the future. So today, we are talking about 5G. We are talking about the fifth generation of the fixed network, talking about Wi-Fi 6. In 10 years from, and of course, within that, we are talking about gigabit everywhere. We are talking about 10 to 20 milliseconds. We are talking about uh, uh, zero packet loss. In 10 years' time, we'll be talking about 6G. We're talking about the sixth generation of the fixed network, and we're talking about uh, almost one millisecond uh, 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 latency, and we'll be talking about 100 gig to one terabit everywhere. So things are transforming. We continue to invest in, R in the R&D to make sure that we are taking you to the future uh, early enough and ahead of anyone in the competition. Of course, to build and help you build additional applications and solutions for your industry to benefit your business. With that, I end my presentation. I thank you very much for joining us today, and we continue to deliver on our promise on bringing digital to every person, home, and organization for a fully connected, intelligent world. Thank you, and have a great day. Thank you.